Hi, I'm Jason Levine. This week on Make It, I'm super excited to talk with Valentina V. As a shooter, editor, and seasoned social marketer, Valentina has been there and done that. From atop an active volcano to a blinding sandstorm in the deserts of Dubai, she crafts visual stories that mesmerize and engage you. Right now on Make It. <laughs> Valentina, thank you so much for joining me today. So great to see you again. Thanks for having me, Jason. So I thought maybe we'd get started by kind of you giving your backstory, yeah. including the fact sort of where you grew up, where, where you come from, and how you got here and how you kind of started this amazing journey into video and photography. I was born in Kazakhstan. I came to this country when I was seven years old yeah. and it instantly fell in love with movies because in Kazakhstan, I, I didn't really have a lot of media that I could mm -hmm. look at. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got here, I jumped straight into... Uh, what is Microsoft Paint and how do I use it? And then what is a camera? I started using my dad's camcorder right. in high school. Right. I was like the video girl. I would always incorporate video into any project. Okay. Um, and then in college, I went to UCLA. All right, Go Bruins. Bruins. Yeah, that's right. And at UCLA, it was either, um, the film program there is a little tricky. You have to either take two years of general education and then apply in your third year for the film program. Right. But I didn't want to do that right. uh, because I didn't want to go to college for four years. I wanted to speed track it in three. And just start working. And just start working and right. get out there. So I did design media arts, right. which is a different major right. with a film minor. And that way I was able to take all the film classes that I actually wanted to take. None of the ones that I didn't that, was, that were required for the right. actual major. Right. After college, I had a very depressing year. I could not find work. Nobody would hire me. I, and that's because like just no experience? Millennial. Or, right, yeah, right, okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and also no experience, not much experience anyway. I was doing, you know, like PA work on movies for lower than minimum wage. And this is still in Los Angeles? Los Angeles, okay, yeah, yeah. I decided to stay in Los Angeles yeah. because why would you not? Especially if we're gonna go into film, right? It's the best place to be. Right. Um, and I couldn't afford to really like stay in any nice places, so I lived in a basement of somebody's house. Hence the dark year comment. Literally there, yeah. dark. Literally dark, yeah. Um, showered at the gym a lot of the time. <laughs> right. uh, These are the dues you have to pay, though, I think, to I get to think, where you are, right? I think it grew me, Jason. Right? Yeah. No, it's I, true. No, it's, it's, yeah. I, th I think. You gotta suffer a little. You do have to suffer a little. For um, your art. For just in general. <laughs> right, yeah. My dark year ended with Michelle Fawn hiring me right. as her editor. And about six months into editing her YouTube videos, she hired me as her cinematographer as well. Right. I don't know if you've heard, but she has recently stopped yes. making YouTube videos. Yes. So I was out of a job. Mm -hmm. And I uh, became the creative content director of a company called Aperture. It's a camera accessories manufacturing company. Yeah, and I, I saw you, you saw me. at NAB, at the big broadcast show. And I was there with them. You were there with them. Just recently. That's right, I was like, hey, Valentina, sold out. I mean, I just, right, right. <laughs> no. Working for the no, man now, I, right, yeah, yeah, It was no. a great company, like right. nothing against them. Right. No, no, no. Um, I really loved working there, but I also felt like uh, I couldn't work on my own creative projects as much on the side. Right. So just a couple of weeks ago, I quit my job and now I'm fully freelance. Okay. Yeah. Hire me. So you've already been kind of em em embracing this digital world and now you're working with Michelle Fon who has, again, at, at the time, millions, uh, still, I'm sure, yeah. millions of views, millions, so much exposure. But it didn't sort of stop there because you were also helping and working with some other YouTubers and doing freelance kind of e leading up to that, right? I think it's very important to not just do the one thing right. that you have to do, right. especially because it's not going to be around forever. And then you don't have contacts. You don't have a net to fall back on. Right. So while I was working with Michelle Fawn, one of the things that I'm so glad I did is I asked for a week off mm -hmm. to go to NAB. Right. Just to, to see the new technology, to right. learn about new cameras, and to maybe meet people. And at NAB, I happened to run into an Adobe representative and tell them that, hey, I shoot for Michelle Fawn. And I happened to have been invited to a party where I happened to have met <sighs> Benjamin Von Wong, who yes. was on this very show That's right. earlier. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And now he's like my primary collaborator. And I sh he's a photographer, for those who right. don't know. He's right. a photographer. Um, he does epic photography for brands and charities. And I uh, am now his primary go-to videographer and editor. All right. Um, and you've and already had quite a few pretty amazing adventures with Ben. 
Ben's adventures are my favorite thing to do. <laughs> and let's just not underscore, I mean, when you say epic, you truly mean epic. I truly Even the mean, places you've been have been kind of epic locations. I, I, yeah, like off of the cliffs in the Blue Mountains of Australia, for example. <laughs> right. Or there was a volcano, at I think, midnight right? on top of an active volcano, standing on actual lava, the bottom of That's my right. shoes completely melted. <laughs> right. Now, you had a really interesting story, too, w when working with him, because I know uh, he did this piece with uh, sort of a, a takeoff on Game of Thrones with this sort mm -hmm. of pregnant woman, and it was a, originally a YouTube video that yes. he had created. Before I met Ben, I was a fan of Ben's for right. many, many years. Kind he, of like your sort of visual style he, guru a bit. He's my idol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I've watched every video he's ever made right. just to, like, glean um, information and glean tips from them. And he makes these amazing behind the scenes videos on his photo shoots. Right. So after I met him at the Adobe party at NAB, he asked me, hey, would you, what do you think about maybe repurposing some of my YouTube videos for Facebook? And um, I'm like, yes, please, I will do anything for you. Right. So he, uh, he's like, okay, have at it. Just pick any video from my YouTube channel. I picked a video that had 16,000 views in one year. Okay. Um, but the premise was great. It was this woman who donated to a charity that Ben uh, was a part of, and she won a maternity photo shoot, okay. um, Game of Thrones style. Right, okay, and cool. And the video, unfortunately, didn't get that many views because I think it was from the view of a photographer. And like, what, what are the technical aspects right. to this photo shoot? And it had a very narrow audience. Right. And who was the audience at that point? Other photographers probably just checking and in on... Ben's fans. Right, sure, right. Um, but I saw this as, whoa, like any woman who has a child, is thinking about having a child, any man who has a child, right. anyone who ever saw a maternity photo shoot would be interested in this because right. it's just crazy over the top. Mm -hmm. um, so the video that I repurposed for Facebook came to it from that angle, mm -hmm. and it got 2 million views in the first day. Compared to 16,000 in a year. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when both Ben and I sort of, it clicked <laughs> that, oh, we work well together. Yes. And we, we can almost read each other's minds, and we understand what is good for each uh, social media. Mm -hmm. Since then, each one of our campaigns has been multi-tiered. We do an 11 minute video, a five right. minute video. So you do a lot of reversioning videos. for the different formats and different I think levels. it's so important. Right. I think if your Facebook audience is gonna be completely different people than right. your YouTube audience. Your YouTube audience are your diehard fans, the fans that wanna know the nuts right. and bolts. Right. The Facebook audience is the Midwestern moms and anyone in that area that would like to share that right. video, you know, the overseas people. And it's also, and I think you make a great point there about reversioning for these platforms, it's also the, the sort of amount of retention that you're going to have on those platforms. YouTube, if you're a subscriber, you're going there, you go there to watch and to endure three minutes, five minutes, right. whatever it is. Facebook tends to be more of you're flipping through, it's momentary. If it catches your eye, if it catches your interest, you may stick around, but it's meant to be kind of quick, and it's, it's just a completely different way of delivering the same message. Yeah, YouTube yeah. is more evergreen, That's and right. Facebook is more temporal. Right, right, absolutely. This, this brings up a good question, because you do a lot, of, a lot of video for social, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And uh, you yourself, though, don't actually use those, those platforms so much to promote yourself. So the first question is, how do you typically promote yourself? How do you get Valentina V out there? I don't promote myself at all. No, in no fashion have I ever been, except just now when I pointed to the camera That's right, yes. and said hire me mm -hmm. as a joke. Right. Um, I've never promoted myself because so far I haven't needed to. Maybe in the future right. I will, but for now I have more work than I can handle because people see my work and they want to have me work on their projects as well. Right. right. Um, so there's no reason for me to promote myself. And I think the whole culture of promoting yourself to strangers on social media is, it's its something that I can't relate to. It's mm -hmm. something that would seem forced for me. Right. My primary social media is just my personal private Facebook page with just my friends right. where we talk about whatever we want. <laughs> right. And you have a site though, like you have your Valentina V site. I have and, a portfolio yeah, site. Portfolio, sure. And right. it's nothing more than that. It's right. just showing off, this is what I can do. This is what I've done. The content that you create has a really just a very modern, and I say modern not to sound like it's, it can also feel retro and warm and beautiful. There's like that very first Michelle Phan video that you did. It's one of my favorites ever, the pool one. Yes. 
I summer mean, gold. Summer gold. There's something about it that feels, God, it, feel, it feels like summer 60s San Francisco to me, and yet it's totally now. It's very now. What kind of uh, helps you kind of achieve those looks and builds that part of your style? One person that I'm very inspired by is an editor and filmmaker named Leonardo D'Alessandri. And he did this video called Watchtower of Turkey, which I consider to be probably the best edited video of all time. Okay. And I've watched it so many times. All and right. he's a huge influence on me, just the way that his eye sees the frame uh, and the way that he connects the previous clip to the next clip. The art of the cut is just so clear with him. Right. My other mentality is do the thing that you can do and don't have this mentality of, of this is a film set and I must only be able to do one thing. Right. For me, uh, yeah, sure, I can go on a glide cam with this shot or I can go on a slider or I can go handheld. Um, I can switch between that easily right. based on you know what the shot needs or what I see the shot being. Right. I'm, I don't specialize in anything in particular. Mm -hmm. And if I need to learn a new piece of equipment, I just go to YouTube and learn. Right. Or if I need to use another piece of equipment, right. I just rent it for a day and right. I learn it. Do you see the final product? Do you see the final look of it before it's done? Absolutely. Yeah. I see the final product in my brain. I know I'm not supposed to. <laughs> right. You're taught in and film who, school. That's right. I was going to say, it's not film school. That's edit right. in your head. That's right. But for me, it helps me so much, even if I know the music track that I'm going to use beforehand. Mm -hmm. That is so helpful to me it's to, to realize exactly what shots I need. The other thing about the digital world is that you don't have a lot of time. Right. You don't have time to redo take after take. Right. You don't have a huge budget with a big crew. You're just right. running and gunning. Right. And you sort of have to be scrappy about the amount of time you spend on a shot. Right. You can't be repeating it over and over and over again right. to make it perfect. Right, right. So it, it's, your brain is firing on all cylinders in a way, mm -hmm. and it has to, and you have to know sort of like what, or at least I have to know. <laughs> right. What's my cut gonna be? Do I right. need this piece of footage? Right. The turnaround time is also so quick right. that for me looking through mounds and mounds and piles and terabytes and terabytes right. of footage to find that clip I need is just useless. And you're sort of uncharacteristically economical about the way that you shoot, because I remember you talked about this before, right? I mean, would you say that's kind of one of the biggest things today in sort of making video and content? for both YouTube and social and online networks? Turnaround is getting quicker and quicker. I was talking to the um, general manager of a company that creates a lot of the videos you see on Facebook, but you don't know that they do right. because they outsource uh, and, and they, they create a library of videos and then companies like the LED Bible, the Daily Mail, mm. all of these companies will just buy their videos. Right. And their turnaround is hundreds of videos a day. They don't have time to be going through all the footage. Right. For me, I think it's important that I know what I want. So once I get a shot and right. it's what I want, I'm good with it. Right. I just move on. Mm -hmm. Or I get a d different variation of it just right. in case I need it. And you feel it. You know when you got it. it. It's so right? obvious to me. Right. And that's hard to achieve. I think a lot of people struggle with that, right? And that takes doing it from a I very young age. I've failed many times. Right, you gotta fail. I've you forgotten gotta... to turn the mic on for an entire shoot once right. in college, and that was awful. Thank you for being honest about that, because everybody's done I did that. the wrong right. shutter speed for slow motion, so when I put it into Premiere, it was very jittery and awful, right. Right. and I had to scrap the entire project. Right. You learn from your mistakes. That's right. I'll tell you a story. I was hired by an advertising agency to yeah. create commercials for backpacks. Yeah. However, we were supposed to shoot, I was supposed to shoot by myself two commercials in one day, right. while there was also a photo shoot for those backpacks going on that same day. Right. And I remember this very clear thought I had at the end of the day that, number one, I accomplished everything I wanted. Right. And number two, there was no way I would have ever been able to accomplish any of that if I hadn't been training on Michelle Fawn videos for the past two years. Right. There's no way. It, we were just going so quickly. We were running all over LA from the mountains to downtown. Right. And I had to build a narrative for the commercial right. as I was going along right. because I didn't know what these backpacks looked like. I didn't know right. who the models were. I showed right. up to set that day with my basic camera kit and a few stabilizers. Right. But I just knew. I knew exactly. And their turnaround on that edit was a week for both commercials. And I delivered and they were happy right. and everything was done. Mm -hmm. And... It's the training, it's the hours that you put in, right. failing over and over again. Right. Hopefully you 
my advice is fail on your own projects. That's right. On your own <laughs> right. Side, not when it comes Preferably time. so, right, right. Have a dark year, perhaps, an exploratory perhaps. period, right? To really kind of feel that struggle, yeah. right? I mean, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you gotta kind of crawl your way out of it. And you've certainly done that. You've done amazing Thank things. So, so now, what what's next? Uh, obviously, I know you're doing more work with Ben. I know you work um, with Karen. Uh, you've done some work with Karen Chang as well. Yeah, Karen Chang is a viral video filmmaker, mm -hmm. and she is responsible for the donut selfie trend right. and for that uh, Beats by Dre commercial. Yeah, so cool. And for a lot of videos that, again, you don't realize she's made, but they're on your Facebook feed. Right. Because she makes them for companies. Uh, what's next right now is let's try the freelance thing and see how it goes. The last time I was freelance was during my dark year. Right. And I think that whole year I probably made $5,000. Right. It was impossible to live. Right. So, right. but right now, I mean, I've, I can tell you I've been freelance for two weeks mm -hmm. and I am financially stable yeah. and I'm turning down projects left and right and I'm sort of cherry picking exactly what right. I want. Well, I'm passionate about travel, mm -hmm. about seeing new places, because Ben introduced me to right. a lot of amazing locations, and also helping people, helping charities, documentary work. I would love to see, with your through your eyes, a documentary. Like, I could really see you producing that kind of thing. Again, about a particular cause, or just a particular topic that's passionate, because I think whether you're doing... Yeah, summer, summer gold videos, you're doing something standing atop a volcano or doing a basic edit for social. Your passion and your, your personal stamp comes through. So I wish you the best of luck. I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. Me I think this is going to be an amazing freelance year for you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Can't wait to have you back again on The Make It Show. And again, hopefully see you sometime shooting in San Francisco or perhaps uh, at the pyramids in Giza next time. You'll I'll have to let back, us know. I'll be back, Jason. I'll, I'll text you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll text you. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget to tune in to Make It each week where we cover incredible creatives doing amazing things, showcasing their talents, their successes, the failures. We've all been there. It happens. Learn, get inspired, and join us right here on Make It. Thank you so much again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.